My name is Alex Marson. I'm one of the UCSF Sandler Fellows. Um, I've just, I started my lab here about a year ago. Uh, we, we focus on, on T-cells and the immune system and really ask the fundamental question of how T-cells specialize to carry on really highly, highly specialized functions that are required to keep a balance in the immune system, protecting it from infections, but also preventing the, the immune system from going out of control and causing autoimmune disease. And we, tr we intersect that with with studies of human genetics of autoimmune disease and also small molecule screens for potential new therapies for autoimmune diseases. I started with a really basic question of developmental biology, which is something that a lot of developmental biologists are sort of fixated on, which is how, how do you start with one fertilized egg that, that has all the genetic information that you'll have in adulthood, and then as you develop, that, that fertilized egg not only divides, but eat the, the progeny cells take on different specialized identities. So it starts as a, as a little embryo. And it starts making liver and skin and brain. And somehow the same genetic information gets translated into all these specialized cell types in the body. And so that, 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 that problem has just been fundamentally interesting to me. But, and, and now we have more and more tools to address that. And then as I was working on this at, at MIT during my PhD, you know, I was actually starting in the very early stages of looking at embryonic stem cells and how embryonic stem cells make early decisions about what kinds of cell they'll begin to, begin to be, and started thinking about ways that the same process of thinking about how cells specialize could more directly connect to, to patient research, you know, things that would actually inform how we treat patients. You wrote the T-Reg, so the... Where, where we are right now is that We've actually, we've actually had a lot of recent success in connecting our research on these programs that, of, of how cells specialize and carry out dedicated roles in the immune system. What we, as we've learned about the ways that cells control their identity, we've intersected this with another set of data. We've been looking at how, at how genetic variation among people, which predisposes to autoimmune disease, how the, how the genetic variation between individuals actually can disrupt these programs of how, specialize, how cells specialize. When, when you look at, at this at variation that contributes to diseases like type 1 diabetes, about 80 or 90 percent of the, the variation that contributes to these diseases doesn't occur in genes. It occurs in these regions of the gene, these long stretches in the genome that have been traditionally called junk DNA. And what, we, what we've seen in, in building on the work of others is that actually this junk DNA is not junk DNA. It's filled with molecular switches that, turn, that are important for turning neighboring genes on and off. And those switches control how cells end up specializing and, and taking on these specialized roles. And so we actually find sites of, sites of genetic difference where, there's, there's, where the DNA sequence, the A's and T's and C's and G's, are different within these switches. And so we're starting to learn how common variation that contributes to the risk of autoimmunity is actually affecting the switches that control cell identity. So that sets us up for to, to really to address the next round of questions of can we go in and actually perform molecular surgery and actually rewire the circuitry with new, with new tools to correct those defects and see if to really pinpoint exactly how we'd, we'd correct that. So our hope is that we'll both converge on sort of new tools to correct DNA mutations, but also think of new ways that we could use pharma, pharmacological approaches to correct imbalances that, that, it, that already people, that patients already have that predispose them to autoimmunity. Right now, one of the nice things about having a, a relatively small lab that's new I I, um, every day I basically get to sit down and, and talk to everyone in my lab but in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a variety of sort of informal, quick, quick, quick answering questions or, or brainstorming with people. And then sometimes we come in here and we really, we have a whiteboard here where we're, we're, up, we're up putting, the, uh, drawing, drawing schematics of how, of how things might be working inside the cell and thinking about better ways to test it. You know, I have to say, I, I've also I've spent most of my time in the past year in, in the lab. Right now, it's, I think of it as, as a child it's, that sort of needs a lot of nurturing and, uh, and it's, it's, it's also something I want to come in and see, how, see the progress it's making each day. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's been great. I'm, I'm just, I'm really proud of the people in my lab and, and, and sort of the energy that they're putting into it. So I'm trying to, to at, least, at least match and also uh, keep up, you know, the energy in the labs to try to make progress.